Well, I mean, you came into the side as a young lad in, in 68, 69, which was a, a struggling side. Just had done really well the season before when you were, of course, in the intermediates. Mm. Uh, then you were introduced in, in a side that only just missed uh, re-election. So what happened between the end of 68, 69 and the start of 69, 70 uh, uh, to, to turn Chesterfield into a promotion force? Well, I didn't, I didn't start the first two games because um, I had been left out the previous previous year. Um, but because the Chesterfield, they, they lost the first game and into, I think it was a Bradford Cup game, that they lost that as well. Um, they got me off the bench to play and I played the whole rest of the season. And Kevin, unluckily, Kevin got kicked out for a couple of three three games mm-hmm. and then we both came back together. Um, and that's when we really started well together and scored probably 40 goals between us. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that, that summer leading up to the season, Jim had done a lot, Jim McGuigan had done a lot of work with, uh, with yes. you, hadn't they? Well, yeah, because I wasn't too good previously, you know, I was, um, he, he did, he kept me from um, April all the way through training and doing a lot of physical stuff mm-hmm. and trying to stroke the ball well and eventually that got going really, really well mm-hmm. and that's when Jim said, yeah, you can play. But of course, in that summer, he brought in a couple of uh, key players as well, the likes of Archer Fennerty yeah. uh, uh, coming in. John Archer, a, a phenomenal captain, and uh, uh, of course, Tom Fennerty, a, a wonderful uh, footballer. Did, did they, were they the final pieces in the jigsaw? Brilliant. They were brilliant. Uh, he brought in other people, but Charlie Bell came in mm-hmm. as well, a big centre back. Um, and of course, Alan Stevenson. Um, so, Everything that, that that developed brilliantly, but all the players were slightly different in all the, in all the different areas, which made the, the team good. Well, of course, you, you mentioned about Alan Stevenson. Uh, Alan Humphreys started off in goal, then he picked up an injury, and it, it, it was a take the coach round and knock on his door to pick him up exactly. job, wasn't it? That, for that's, his first that's what game. happened. We were, we were going to Scunthorpe, and unfortunately, because uh, Mr. Humphreys he, he couldn't play, then we had to go. Instead of going on the, we went through Stavely and picked him up, mm-hmm. and we we beat um, beat them at Scunthorpe, and he, he, he was superb, Alan, um, and we actually played against Mr. Keegan mm-hmm. at Scunthorpe, yeah. um, but we we did beat them. So, at, at what time did you start feeling that you've got a a team together that that could start knocking on those top four positions? I don't really understand everything like that because uh, I just wanted to just keep playing each game. Mm-hmm. Um, when I when I scored quite early in the, in, in 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 the season um, against Newport, mm-hmm. which was four goals, mm-hmm. um, and and then Kevin and, and myself we started combining together. He'd score or I score, and that got that got really really good, and I enjoyed it all the way through, and uh, it then started to build up towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And that's when everybody got really into it, and um, yeah, that's when we got promotion. Have you ever had a, an understanding with a, a, another uh, player alongside up, up, up top, like you had with Kevin Randall, because it, it just seemed magical? No, not really. Um, on those particular, you know, that, that particular first two, two or three years, that's when Kevin and, and me were, were both playing. Um, other people would come in. Um, but Kevin was was the top man for me. He was, he was a really good player um, that would cross the ball for me for me to either miss goals or score goals. <laughs> but you know, uh, I, I would hold it up and, and give it to the brilliant individual midfield players, and Kevin would be into the channels mm-hmm. to create a lot of stuff. It, it, it was Ernie Moss. Uh, initially, I had a, a very good understanding with Ivan Hollett, but ha- Ivan went out of uh, favour with Jim McGuigan and. Um, Jim was a brave man, he introduced uh, young Ernie, who was very raw at the time and played probably two thirds of the season and um, didn't score a league goal, I think. I think he scored in the cup. He might have scored a league goal towards the end of the season. But um, Jim McGuigan kept faith with him and uh, me and Ernie forged a tremendous partnership because uh, we complimented each other, you know. I, I, he was a very good header of the ball, as you know. And I had uh, the ability to, to beat a man and, and cross the ball both sides. 
And so uh, I could supply the crosses and uh, Ernie could get the headers in. And uh, we just had this chemistry where I didn't have to look for him and uh, I would just cross the ball into the right area and I know Ernie would be on the end of it. And he was the same. He, he would get himself in a position where he knew the ball was coming. Of course, one, one of the things that people who perhaps started watching football more recently forget is that there was only one substitute in, uh, uh, in those days. So you didn't need to have a, a huge squad to put a, a, a team out. But the... The starting eleven was pretty predictable yes. in that year. It really didn't change a lot, did it? No, it didn't. And I mean, the substitute that was was on the bench um, hardly ever got on at times, mm. and, unless someone got injured. Mm. Uh, rather than um, you know, if we were losing the game, we'll drag somebody off. That's you know, Jim McGuigan, he wouldn't do that. Um, but if someone got injured, um, then they'd, they'd change just on the one guy. But um, it did, it did. It did go quite well for us because we all stayed. We all stayed on the pitch. <laughs> How influential for you, as well as for Chesterfield, was Jim McGuigan? Spot on. It was quality. Um, Scottish guy. Um, I mean, I know he's passed away, but for me, he, he, he didn't. He, he wasn't. Uh, he didn't argue with me. He didn't really uh, criticise me. Um, he started to develop me, you know, um, for, for, for that first year. And then, it, in a way, he put his arm around me to sort of try to develop and get better and better and better. Mm. Please get better and better, he was saying. Mm. Um, so I just worked hard and, and then he said, spot on. And a lot of your goals obviously came from your head. Uh, uh, is that just a natural... Uh, instinct that you know when to, to time the run to jump or yeah. is that something that, that you learned? No, I, no definitely uh, that's what I was learning um, but because I was quite tall mm. and to be fair um, it was quite late in the games when I was quite fit for 90 minutes mm. maybe one or two of the centre backs 75, 80 minutes and then that's well, why I managed to sort of get higher than them mm. and score score more goals because I was younger and I was fitter. Mm. Um, but then it developed as it went further on and on and on. I did, you know, I did get better with my feet. Mm. Well, my right foot, my left foot wasn't very good, but equally that that was okay. But I, I wasn't I wasn't really quick. Um, but I was a big front man, and then other people played off me. Midfield players were quality, centre backs and defenders were excellent, mm -hmm. keeper. So everything in the team was good. And of course, to exploit your skill in the air, having somebody who could uh, uh, place free kicks and corner kicks mm -hmm. like Tom Fennerty was mm -hmm. just a bonus, wasn't it? It was, uh, particularly corners or free kicks, mm -hmm. whereby John Archer would dink the ball in. And uh, on that particular first the, the season that we, we, we won, um, from the corners in particular, Tom Fennerty would, would be at the near post and then other, other big guys such as me, Charlie Bell, Albert Phelan, um, probably even Kev Randall, mm. we'd all be diving into certain areas mm. and when the ball came and flicked on, we would score. As, as, it, uh, uh, as the season unfurled, Chesterfield and the likes of Wrexham and Swansea and Port Vale were, 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 were clear to be the, time, uh, the, the teams that were going to be the ones to, uh, 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 to beat and there were some cracking games involving those teams weren't there? There were, um, you know, because when we got together, um, yeah, it, it was it was quality. I mean, but we just went in, and we were we were looking at that particular team for next Saturday. We, were, we weren't looking, you know, months ahead. We were looking at a particular team and training throughout throughout the whole week. We would we were we were really looking at it and saying, right, this is where we're going to be. And Jim McGuigan would be saying, there's certain people, certain defenders, this, that and the other. And it, it would slightly alter a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, but we worked so hard um, throughout the whole 11 players mm -hmm. in those days, that was great. Mm -hmm. um, and clinching promotion away from uh, uh, home at Exeter, I think, was it true that, uh, uh, um, I can't remember the circumstances, away at Exeter, uh, uh, anyway, what what were the feelings when you came off the pitch and all the other results had gone the right way? Uh, well, it, it was good because when we were down at Exeter, I think um, Tom Fanity scored scored the goal and we equalised. It, it was yeah. one one. Yeah. 
Um, but when we came back off, yeah, everything was, uh, you know, it was, great. it was brilliant. And everybody was cheering and we'd come back from Exeter on, on, on the coach and one or two people had, had, had have a drink and say, mm. brilliant. <laughs> um, but then when we, we, we did go across to, um, where did we go to uh, when we lost? To, well, oh, it was crew, it was crew. It was crew, it was yeah, crew, yeah. Uh, on the Friday evening. Mm. And Ivan, Ivan Hollett, he, he actually scored a goal. Mm. Um, but I did too, but we lost 2-1. Mm. And then the following, the following Saturday, we beat Peterborough, Peterborough up here mm. when uh, we got a delivery of uh, the medals and, mm. and the actual trophy. Yeah, and uh, uh, I've, I've heard a story, I think it was Albert Holmes told me a story some time ago because the the sixty nine seventies had quite a few reunions, haven't they? And yeah. I've been at uh, most, if not all of them. Um, he said that Dan Newton they, uh, uh, gave everybody a pen knife <laughs> the, at the end as a, as, a, as a thank you. Yes, and, uh, yeah, they did. And, 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 and the, yeah, and, and I think the, the Sheffield tradition is you give them a penny. Anybody who gives you a pen knife gives you a penny. And, uh, yeah. uh, and Albert always used to say that Dan Newton came out on top. Well, well, he, yeah, it was. And uh, I mean, he, he's, he was a quality fullback. Um, but the whole team for me was brilliant. But yeah, when, when when they gave us that and shook a hand, you know, it was <laughs> a little pen knife. Did you get a bonus for winning promotion that season? No. 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 <laughs> Typical, really. Arthur, well, Arthur Sutherland wanted to let you know yeah, about bonus. No, I mean, I'm not going to tell you how much, how much wages we got, because we, we got very little. But that didn't worry me because I just I just enjoyed it. I just loved playing playing the football. Mm. Um, equally now, quite expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're here in the home dressing room now, we're sitting in the bit yeah. that uh, uh, used to be yours. Did you have to bag your space? Did you, uh, did you have to uh, uh, wait until you'd been around before you could choose or were you just told this is your bit? Well this is where, this is where I was um, and equally it was a number eight as well because as it was going around. It was bigger than this and um, there were, uh, there's, everybody came in when we were training, mm. uh, so there were loads here. But in, in the actual, when we were kicking off on on the Saturday, it was the goalkeeper, number two, mm. number three, mm. and this is where number eight was. Yeah. So that was fine. Mm. And then there was a substitute just just around the corner. Mm. So that was excellent. So at, at, at that time, were you still doing the majority of the training at Pitt Street at Eckington? Was? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we were. We did go across to Pitt Street. We equally did a lot of. Um, uh, heavy running mm. around the outside of the pitch mm. um, but that was early in the week that was Monday or Tuesday and then we developed it um, but equally we, we did go uh, we did, went running around Lenica Woods and all sorts. So you, you used to win the cross countries as everybody tells me. Yeah. But you didn't win the sprints. <laughs> oh I never won the sprints. No. <laughs> um, I would never ever get close to 100 yards or 150 but then when, when I got to sort of 400 yards mm. I, yeah. would, I would just plod past everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and equally, we, we, we went underneath the um, uh, underneath the yeah under the main stand though, under the main yeah, stand, yeah, and, we're, and we were doing a lot of yeah. uh, work with uh, the um, what was it? What was it called? What was all that? The, the, the gymnastic type of thing. Yeah, rings. yeah, it, it rings, used to be rings, rings. When I first started rings, coming to a ring, yeah, and we had to be yeah. up and down onto the benches. Just to get you fit, yeah, and we were sweating, yeah. But it, but underneath there, that that was good. So 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 now, in a match, players will come out at five past two and do a rigorous warm up. You guys used to just sort of come out of the pitch and start playing. Did you do yeah. warm ups in here? We did little bits of warm ups and, and stretches, but when we were told what we were doing by the manager and, and the assistant, etc., and then we'd go out about quarter to mm. and warm up, mm. but stay out there and then play. Whereas now it changes differently, mm, doesn't it? Mm. You know, they go out, come back in, do this, do that. But we were just going out there, they were, and, and they were get, telling us what to do. Mm. Get out there, went out in the line, and then we work for five minutes or so. Then we kick off. Mm. Mm. 